Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape, and I've got a very, very important person with me. Yeah. What's your name? Houston Arms. Houston Arms with the Arms Family Ranch, and we are gonna build this man an amazing, amazing pond. Yep. All right, let's go get him. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So in a couple boxes over there, we have our filters, we have our liner, we have our pumps and all that kind of stuff. We have to design the pond based off of the size liner that we have. So we're gonna do a pond probably a little bigger than the size of your water trough over there. Sound good? Mm -hmm. The only difference is it won't look like a metal trough. It's gonna look mm -hmm. like a real pond, right? And we're gonna take some of those rocks, not all 24 tons, <laughs> and bring them down into here. So we'll get a chance to go up there, pick out some of our favorite rocks. I would definitely wanna get you a rock rock that I would call it a fish feeding rock, a rock that you can walk out onto and actually feed your fish and slowly train those bass mm -hmm. to come eat right out of your hands. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right, so what we were looking at yesterday, when we're designing water features, we try to design them from inside the house. And that looks like a kitchen to me, unless it's some really, really fancy bedroom. <laughs> so if we can line up the waterfalls, so every morning you're eating breakfast, whether it's outside or inside, you can still see the waterfalls, good? Mm -hmm. well, I think we put the pond right here. You good with that? Dad? Yeah, start it about, what do we say, John? We can come off a couple feet, right? Yeah. And not really matter. And then we're gonna walk off so we could go about 11 feet. We'll come up into here. And John, I'm thinking, you guys, everybody, John Adams, Modern Design. Hey, world. Artist of the year 2000 yeah, something. ish, 18. 2000, 2000, 2000 something. We'll 2000. Go with something. Yeah, 2000. <laughs> I say we just dig maybe a big oval and let those rocks help us change the shape of it. Cool. Sounds great. Um, so let's see uh pond come out to about here ish. 11 feet. We'll go 12, we'll go we can go 13, right? Because we have a 20. Yes. Eight pups. We'll give this a little bit of a cove to fall into. Do like it going this way? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get a little bit of a cove over here. Change that quite a bit with the rock. If we can get that drop, John, to come maybe a little bit this way and do like a island rock or something, mm -hmm. we can probably get that water to kind of shoot over into this space before it goes in our skimmer box. Okay. Over there, okay. or vice versa. What are we gonna do with the dirt? Good question, bud. <laughs> Years ago, this guy named the Pond Guy, he's got another name, but nobody knows what it is, came up with a system for building water features. And he figured out a way to build a pond in one day. Really? And to answer your question about the dirt, part of that process is what to do with the dirt. So everything is about deficiencies and all that kind of stuff. So the very first thing we're gonna do, we mark out the pond, that's step one. Second thing we do is we place our filters. So we have a biological filter and a mechanical filter. That'll go over here. You'll see those in a second but we're gonna place those lay the plumbing down on the ground and then all the soil that comes up out of here is gonna get flipped over there to create the berm for our waterfall and then more importantly bury that plumbing so later we don't have to go through the berm trench through the berm to, to lay down the plumbing so let's go I think we'll go over there grab uh, did you get your knives and we got some knives all I'm lacking is a blade hello yeah. <laughs> That's not gonna that one's much. not gonna work <laughs> something about the razor blades on airplanes you know so let's go see what type of product we we got it and then we'll start getting this dug out. This is gonna be so much fun today. I got my good friend John Adams with me. I've got Greg Gill, I got Mike over there, and we're gonna have a whole lot of fun. We are building a pond that I have built probably at least 
400 times, but never in Oklahoma and never for Houston, his dad, Dan, and whole arms family out here. So we're gonna have some fun today. We're getting at it. We're gonna build it exactly the same way we would back home. 20 steps, 20 products, and it's gonna be awesome. What I'm more excited about is half the guys I'm with don't think we can do this in a day. So they're here to see actually how we get this done as fast as we get it done. Now, the one thing that's different than what we used to do maybe 20 years ago when building this pound all the time is that machine up there. So that's definitely gonna help quite a bit. We also have an enormous selection of rock, which show you in a little bit over here. Um, what's nice about that huge selection is uh, we can make this thing perfect, 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 perfect. And that boy is as excited as I was. Hey Houston, how old are you? I'm nine. Nine? I think I built my first pond when I was 13. So the fact that you're doing it four years earlier than I am, you might be at some point the next pond artist of the year. Maybe. Hey, who knows, right? <laughs> That'd be the, the expansion. That would be the upper pond up there. We pop that skimmer box out. Mm -hmm. Then you get this meandering stream. And because your plumbing is so deep over there, you can pull it off. We get waterfalls. You know, we just reshape this berm right here. Get waterfalls falling this way to a pond in here. The little bridge out to the yard and huh? koi window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing before we think about expansion, we should probably focus on building this pond first. <laughs> in the dirt. I can't even get in it. What, what do you think? Do we leave, do we leave this for the machine? Yes. Yeah. Apparently there's like yeah, 20 steps or something. Yeah, that one's pretty cool, all right. I like all the different contours and stuff to it. As far as a rock that you want to stand on to feed fish, totally up to you. But you have to stand on the unlevel surface. So we could put that one in, but you've got 24 tons to choose from. So let's go look at some of the other ones real quick. Yeah, 24 tons, a lot of rocks. Like I like this one because of all the lichens and everything on it. it, makes it look like the pond's been there a long time. But see how we can get this part flat? That one could work. Maybe we put that one next to your favorite. That one's a super cool waterfall, right? If we can get water to kind of see this little notch right here. See how it's high here and high here. If we can get water to kind of come in between there, that could be fun. I really like this one. See how flat this is? And then see how tall it is from here to here? When it's super tall like that and flat, that means then deep water can come up to this rock. So then the fish can come up a lot easier to it. If it's super thin and flat, the fish don't like coming into those flat areas as much. So I say we use that for your fish feeding rock. One down, 300 more to go. Houston, I think it's a beautiful rock and as soon as I saw it here I was like oh my gosh we got to do something with it and it's just calling for a waterfall to come through the challenge is, is the size of that rock and then the space I have from the edge of the pond to where the filter sits our biofalls it's a little out of scale so it's, it would consume that whole space and then we wouldn't get to do anything else interesting with it I think we save that for maybe something we do in the front yard maybe an addition that we've talked about doing at some point or another <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we've got yeah, we're rock for... We're going to have extra rock, right? <laughs> we've got ponds for days. The nice thing though, Houston, is with that selection of rock, we are going to find the perfect stones to create a really nice looking waterfall. All right, you can see that we got the first level dug. We set that basically around 12 to 14 inches deep. 
based off of the, some of the dimensions of our rocks we've got over there. Then we're gonna take another shelf down about 12 inches deep, giving us a final depth of two feet. When marking out that second shelf, get creative, right? But keep in mind the size of your rocks. You start choking an area down too much and you have a 24 inch wide rock, that whole area will be filled with that boulder and it's gonna look a little funny. So notice I kept it pretty wide all the way around, trying to maximize the water value, maximize the space for the bass and still leave room for our big boulders. All right, kids, Brian's going off to get some kind of mossy logs or something he's taking off in the side-by-side. -side. I'm supposed to be digging this hole down from three, four to five, four, whatever that means. Apparently that's like two feet deep, so I'm sure I can do it with this machine. get something just so water like like just kind of does its thing through this but just a little you know like a 500 gallons an hour ish you think it's gonna be too much work no we got all kinds of time okay it's only like 10. i love his attitude <laughs> do whatever now ask me again at 10 o'clock tonight right. if it was a good idea <laughs> We can get it your tall ways if we made this the face and this the bottom. Or do you like the idea of trying to get a little water coming through there? It'd be sexier with water coming through there, 100%. Sexy is the way we roll. Big that width of that shelf would probably have to build up underneath it, but you're basically two feet tall. I say we come in here then with another frame rack. Uh-huh. And then just look for that triangle. Give it a gusher. Mm, I like gushers. <laughs> Boom. Mm, sexy <laughs> gushers. <laughs> some beautiful beautiful stone that came in some oklahoma moss rock from lindley stone i believe super great guy can't believe the selection he showed up here but we're about to set our first rock and we always say the first rock is going to kind of set the momentum for the entire project so let's see how this goes and keep our fingers crossed that it goes super smooth because then it means everything else will It is. 
is just after 11.19, which means it's 11.20. <laughs> and at this point of the day when building a one day pond, our goal is to always have the entire pond rocked in by lunchtime. So during lunchtime, it can be filling. Now, if you've noticed, this is not your typical one day pond because we are using big machine sized boulders. And when you're using machine sized boulders, it's literally one rock at a time. So I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, Johnny? Well, we're doing great, man. Yeah. We're doing great, guys. We are. <laughs> Tell Brian. We're doing great, Brian. I think lunch might be a little bit after 12 is what I'm thinking. And I don't think we'll be finishing at 3.34 o'clock, but we're having fun, right? This thing is amazing. Hmm? It's looking great from in there look already. At, look at that log. Just, you guys look with, so look with cool. me. Look at the log. It's yeah, so yeah. nice. Here you go. <laughs> so nice. Here you go. are basically built the same way. There's a big rock on one side, there's a big rock on the other side. Those are the rocks that are left that Mother Nature couldn't move, right? So water comes down a hill, eroding away, pushing all the earth, leaving back behind these two big rocks. And then the rock in between is where the waterfall comes off. So how you set this rock and this rock, the ones that Mother Nature couldn't move, kind of determine what your waterfall is gonna look like. But we've got this big gap right in here, so we need to fill this in with something. Now some tricks, your dad over here said he really loved this rock. He could picture water just kind of pooling up out of this and like kind of falling over. So what we want to do is get a rock back in here at the same level as this point right here. See how Mother Nature left a high point here and a high point here and a low spot right there. So if I can get a rock exactly at the same level as this, then I can get a little water just to kind of trickle into this area, fill this up. And then you see how this is high and this is high. Where's all the water going to go after it fills this up? Here. Right over that, mm -hmm. right? I want to make this way more bird loving. So like all the songs birds and stuff just kind of come down in here and get a drink because the birds don't like to come in this fast moving mm -hmm. stuff they like these little areas so we are going to start piecing this together hopefully replicating exactly what mother nature does mm -hmm. big rock on one side big rock on the other something in between ready mm -hmm. all right let's go find the something in between set this for you, turn it to the left, opens it up. So you gotta be careful. The harder you press, the more is gonna come out. So try just a nice little bead all through in this track. What do you think? Yes or no? Yes. I think yes too. Yes, yes. We're an inch low. We'll throw some gravel, set it on some gravel, get it where we need it. That little weird V is fine. We can just piece that together. Ready? How do we look? 
Do I look tired? You look bright. Bright. Sun's behind you. You look like an angel. Oh, look like, like, an, an, angel. like an angel. Look like Do an I angel. look like an angel? Yeah, exactly. Good. That's the motivation I needed. It has been a heck of a day. A lot of big rock, a lot of hard digging, and then you throw on. It has to be 110 degrees out here. I have yeah. no idea. Probably with like one of those heat indexes of 4,000, something like, <laughs> like that. But we are moving through it. It is late. It is probably close to 5:30. I'm guessing right now. I am sitting on what is the final waterfall stone. So you can see how big this thing is. It's a good four feet across, but with this natural high spot here and this low spot here, all that water is gonna come like this, drop into a shallow little pool, split around this guy, and then hopefully give us a lot of action as it moves back down into the pond. We are at our final push. So we have what I'm thinking like five to six more main rocks to set, and then we're gonna turn this on. And I know I'm excited. And if I'm excited, you better be excited. So you wanna see this running? Let's go. What did you say when the lights went on? Uh, it looks a lot better. <laughs> it looks a lot better. I can't believe that uh, you've had the bass over there for as long as you have. Do you think they're going to like this more? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Which one of your dogs is going to go in there more? Bella. Bella. Bella, yes. Bella the lab. Dan, hey, thanks so much for the opportunity. Yeah. Really, no, really. We, we yeah. really appreciate you coming no. out. Man. Well, it was, I mean, we've been talking about this for it's been, eight months, six well, months. It's actually been almost right out of year. Yeah, I was going to say. Greg kind of started the, the process. And uh, probably eight months. And eight months. He got you involved with it. Yeah. So we've kind of gone back and forth. We had a bunch of different designs. I actually think this fits the space really, really well. Yeah. We talked about having like a big giant pond up here and starting way back up the hill. And, and uh, it's always fun to add on, right? So whenever, oh, whenever you're ready. The first thing you said when we started this, he's like, oh, I can see the stream going down there to a catch pond down here. <laughs> well, maybe we'll come back after we see how well you maintain this. See if you can get some aquatic plants in there. You think you're going to be able to find a couple of uh, grasses and some different stuff down by the creek? I don't know. Maybe. Well, look for them. You oh, make, you decorate pads. this however you want. You can't screw it up. So if you can find lily pads, put them in. If you can find little plants to put along the edges, put them in. It'll be fun. It's your classroom, no different than I had a classroom when I started and Greg had a classroom when he started. Okay. All right. Um, so it's koi thing. <laughs> right to the point. So you're going to do koi? I want to. You want to do koi and bass? My kid threw a bass at my pond too. My bass is only about that big though. So the challenge with the bass and the koi, the koi has to be at least the same size as the bass. And then they'll be fine. We've got those three goldfish down there. That yep. They're probably eight or nine inches long. Well, maybe we leave those fish in there. And then we put the put koi Put some koi there. up here? Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, you got to promise me one thing. Just send me some pictures as you continue to put stuff in there, all right? Promise? He's going to be the one doing that. All right. Well, you make sure somebody sends me some pictures. All right, bud. Thanks so much. 
Appreciate thank it. You, yeah. Thank you. Woo! Well, that was a long one. I knew we'd get it finished in a day. Said we were going to do an 11 by 16 foot pond, 10 by 15 foot pond in one day, and we did. But I wouldn't say it was easy. I would love to take all the credit for it, but there's no way that happens, right? Without having people like Greg Gill from Eastern Iowa Landscapes, things don't get done. Without having John Adams from Modern Design out in Tennessee, check out his page. He's doing incredible, incredible stuff out there. And I've heard he's building one of the best ponds he's ever seen before, his own personal pond. Last but not least, Mike Cone from Oasis Water Gardens out in Maryland. He was a new guy, flew all the way out here, got on our flight with us, and I guarantee I'm gonna be seeing more of that guy because not only is he one of the hardest working people I've ever seen, he's got an eye for this. So you make sure you check his stuff out too. And last but not least, Arms Family Homestead. Awesome, awesome family all the way through from Daniel's wife, this kid over here. Star of the show. Kid, star of the show. For a nine-year-old kid, I can tell this kid is going places. He was awesome. He reminds me so much of me when I was a little kid. But I know that's what Greg saw in him when he said, hey, we need to come out here and build him a pond. And I 100% agree. Somebody like him totally deserves a pond. And I'm glad we could do it. I'm glad we could all help put it together. Hey, guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and we might do it again. Bye.